everyone, I'm Alyssa Miller and welcome back. It is day two of the 28 day Get Hired Challenge where we're working on getting you hired in cybersecurity. Today we are talking about cybersecurity culture. everyone here we are it is day two of the 28 day get hired challenge it is time to dive in and talk about the culture of cybersecurity. in our first episode we talked about just what is even cybersecurity and how did we how do we end up in this space now we're going to talk about the culture all of chapter one in the book really focuses on just that basic understanding of cybersecurity and just what even is cybersecurity. So as you go out and you're, you're trying to get hired in this space, it's really important to understand the dynamics of the people that you're going to encounter in the cybersecurity industry. Because believe it or not, that is gonna make a huge difference when you're sitting down in an interview across the table from somebody who's maybe seen a very different world than you have in terms of what cybersecurity even means to them. So that's what we're talking about today. We're gonna to talk about some of the values because you see, cybersecurity, we can look at it two ways. Cybersecurity is a community. You can also think about it as an industry. And we'll, we'll talk about both. And we're gonna kind of talk about too how the, the two of those kind of interact and where maybe there's some friction. So let's talk about the community first, because the community is important. The community, quite honestly, for myself, is what I love about being in cybersecurity. Yeah, the jobs are great and whatever, I, I, I do enjoy the work that I do, but for me it's always been about the community. And where did that community really start for me? Well, we can go way back, way back, listen to me, like I'm ancient or something, but. We can go back to you know the late mid late 80s and we had these things we call bulletin board systems you guys ever hear of bbs before so bbs is where where hackers really kind of got our start in really interacting with each other now hackers have existed for years in fact i would tell you hackers have existed for centuries but you know we we kind of started to meet there and that's where we really first see some of the, the, the combined shared values that are really important to this day within the cybersecurity industry. So I'm gonna talk about a few. I can't cover every value that's kind of common to the community, but we're gonna talk about a few. And the first are just the concepts of privacy and liberty. You see, on those BBS sites, and then later when the internet came up, we had IRC and IRC channels, which is where I grew up as a hacker. I, you know, I didn't do, I was a little bit younger, so I didn't really get as much into the BBS, but I'll tell you what, when IRC showed up, I was in there slapping people with trouts and all the, the happy things we did there. But what happened in those communities, those communities of hackers, was we started to interact and privacy above all became one of the most important elements. A lot of times we were doing things and sharing information about stuff that you know was illegal. In episode one, I talked about the Computer Fraud and Abuse Act that was passed in 1986. That made it a federal crime to do some of the things that we were doing. And so privacy was crucial. We didn't know who each other was. And so when we speak about liberty, it was actually a really great feeling. One of the wonderful members of our community, somebody who's been a mentor for me and someone I look up to 
every single day is Jason Street. And Jason Street, if you ever hear him talk, he will constantly tell you about how great it was in those days because none of us knew who anyone else was. We didn't know if you were black or white or Latino, Latina, if you were male, female. We didn't care what gender you were. It didn't matter what your sexual orientation was. We didn't talk about any of that. What mattered to us, what we valued were your skills and your hacks. What were you sharing? What, what information were you providing? And, you know, so what we've seen come up from that community is, is there is that hacker culture and you'll hear a lot about it. In fact, if you ever seen the movie Hackers, not my favorite movie, but a lot of people do like it. I don't like how kind of hokey and cheesy it is in places, but the reality is they did a great job of capturing a lot of the elements of hacker culture. But so on the flip side now, as we covered in chapter one, or episode one rather, we also have this infosec community of people who are those people that are working in organizations trying to defend themselves against nefarious hackers, those that are actually you know, cyber criminals trying to attack them. And a lot of times we see the two butt heads. In fact, if you're familiar with DEF CON, when you read their, uh, on their website and they talk about their call for papers, they specifically say they don't want InfoSec talks. They're a hacker conference. And so speaking of conferences, by the way, that's another value that has always been common to the cybersecurity community, and that is the open sharing of information. It's why we have so many conferences. It's something that we've grown to appreciate. When we were back in those BBS and IRC days, that's what we were doing. We were sharing information. We were digging into different systems of technology, figuring out how they worked, how we could manipulate them, and we shared that information. We didn't charge each other money for that. We just shared that information because we, we appreciated that ability to just talk about it. We all had a passion for technology. And so that was something that was really important to us. And the reason that's important is what you'll see oftentimes from the cybersecurity community is kind of a backlash on some of the commercialization around cybersecurity. It's no secret to anybody that we have an established industry now in cybersecurity that's worth billions of dollars a year. And so you'll see some of that come out in cybersecurity professionals, where as much as we appreciate that technology and we need it every day in our jobs to make our lives easier, a lot of times that commercialization can get kind of shady. And a lot of times it can do harm. And that concept of do no harm is something that really rings as one of the main core ethics of cybersecurity professionals. It's, you'll hear terms like ethical hacking. We mentioned that in episode one as well. And, you know, ethics are big. A lot of us have different skill sets. We think about hackers and the things that we're able to do. For a lot of those hackers, there, there was a, 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 an ethos that grew that we didn't do things for the sake of harming others. We did things because we were passionate about technology and we wanted to understand how it worked. And so when things like the Computer Fraud and Abuse Act made some of those activities illegal, that was a little frustrating and it remains that way today. Because for those of us who believe in the ethics of cybersecurity and doing no harm, we feel th there's an appreciation for the exploration of technology as long as we're not doing it to harm others. And so again, where sometimes we start to see friction between that community and this established industry. As I said, the industry by many different estimates is worth anywhere between 150 to $300 billion a year. That's what organizations and governance, governments spend on cybersecurity products and services. There's new vendors out there all the time. You'll see me talking about some of the vendors and some of their shady tactics. And what has driven so much of this? Well, a lot of it is this idea of digital transformation. That's that concept where we're taking systems that traditionally were not a part of the digital world 
and we're digitizing them, if you will, and bringing them into the digital space. One of the most stark examples of this is healthcare. Where in healthcare, everything used to be on paper and films and whatnot. Now we see all of it converted to computers. Imagery is done digitally. We don't even print things on film a lot of times anymore in the healthcare industry. All of your records are managed in electronic uh, medical record systems or EMRs. And so we see that throughout various industries. I work in the legal industry and we're seeing that with the legal industry as well. All of that paperwork that our lawyers and, and legal professionals do, now all is done in the digital realm. And we've seen that come out now in the internet of what I'll call the internet of everything. We talk about the internet of things, all of these things that are becoming interconnected. We see things like internet connected refrigerators and curling irons and even candles for crying out loud. Everything that could possibly be connected to the internet is getting connected to the internet. And we walk around every day with a computer in our pocket, constantly connected to the internet. And what that has done is that has given rise to the last concept that is critical when we look at the community versus the industry, and that's understanding the human element. The RSA conference, one of the biggest commercial conferences in cybersecurity in 2020, their theme was the human element. That was great recognition of how important the human has become in terms of helping protect systems but also being an avenue for attack. You may have heard about things like social engineering, phishing, all of these various vectors by which people try to trick the human element into making a mistake that allows them to then attack a digital system. And so when we think about cybersecurity community versus cybersecurity industry, the industry tends to be the technologies and the things that we're trying to leverage in defense. The community is really the people. It's the community that makes us great. And so when we talk about should cybersecurity even be an industry? Well, I don't have a good answer for you on that. I think the industry is necessary. I think it is necessary because the products that it creates, the fact that in a you know capitalist world that we live in in most countries, that's what drives the availability of these products and services. If people weren't making money with it, would we have all the cool tools we have? So it's kind of a double-edged sword. But on the, by the same token, again, we can't lose track of the community. So I think we need both. But I want to hear from you. Again, I'm giving away a free copy of my book each and every episode. So I want to hear from you down in the comments. Is cybersecurity an industry and should it be an industry or how should we be approaching cybersecurity better in terms of how we look at it is it an industry is the community is it both is it something completely different we'll randomly select one of your comments and you'll be the winner of a free copy of cybersecurity career guide and then a reminder all throughout the month of february you can also get 35% off all titles at Manning Publications by visiting their website and entering the discount code 28DayCHLMiller. Or to make it easier, you can go to the link here, which will also be down in the description below. Or you can just scan the QR code. Again, I promise it's safe. It is not a Rick Roll. I swear I wouldn't do that to you. So that's all the time we've got for today. Keep coming back. We've got plenty more episodes. It's only day two. We've got 26 more to go. So keep coming back. The 28 day cyber, or excuse me, the 28 day get hired challenge where we're trying to get you hired in cybersecurity. Thanks. We'll see you next time.